All right, welcome to Jazz After Dark, man. <laughs> it sounds corny, but that's what we're calling it tonight, brought to you by... Well, it's not brought to you by anybody, but uh, Bib and Tucker. All right? It's kind of similar to our Wine and Wealth, where we just hang out, just talk a little bit. Uh, we're all at home. We can chill a little bit if you like. If you're watching this during the day, save it, man. Come back and watch it later when you have a little something to drink with you. We're financial advisors here at Jazz Wealth. I want to talk to you tonight with some specifics about how do you build a really comfortable retirement plan, right? And I don't mean for this to be dorky, hence the drink, right? Everybody loosen up a little bit. Let's talk about it. You eventually will get old. I feel it every day. <laughs> I just turned 40 this year, so uh, I certainly feel it. But um, we're going to get old. We got to have some kind of a plan. And oftentimes people think of it as either boring or I uh, just, I don't know the numbers. I don't know how to figure it out. Which calculator do I use? Can I trust anything online? All right, I get that, right? Now we do a, a series of steps with every client, but I want to share with you where do you start, right? And give you something to just take and run with. So because uh, this is a Jazz After Dark series, we don't have to take forever. We can actually, you know, kind of keep it quick still, right? So let's talk about this here. First thing, you need to start by calculating your retirement number. Everybody gets this wrong. They focus on the final amount that they want to have and not the yearly amount, right? So it's cool to say I'm going to have a million dollars, two million dollars, whatever it is, you'll get there, right? But I need you to focus on the yearly number when it comes to figuring in your retirement plan. Give me an example here. I've done a lot of these videos, by the way, during the day where we go over uh, someone that's 40 or 45 or really near retirement and they have different goals and stuff just to try to give you guys ideas. Um, really appreciate the subscribers and everything. You, you join, you're here. So I try to do a lot of different ones there. But here's an example and actually a little sneak peek of our new retirement calculator that we're building out. If you're not familiar with uh, us, we have our own portal. We built everything from scratch in-house here. We don't use like third-party software and things like that. We're trying to make everything specific to clients as they need it. But this is what I mean by this, right? There's a number of different things you can look at. Of course, we need to know a retirement age. If you're young, you're not supposed to know, right? You just get in here and pick yourself something. Get the ball rolling, right? Years of retirement, this depends on your longevity. I won't go through all of these here, but you wanna talk about how much you've already got saved, what sort of returns are you expecting, retirement returns, of course, are usually a little bit lower for people. You can change your inflation expectations and figure out how much do you need to save in order to, for example, retire in 16 years with $40,000 a year. Do not figure out the total amount. The number one mistake people do, they figure out that big amount. And then I go, is that inflation adjusted? And they're like, I don't, I don't know. I just want a million dollars. Well, a million dollars today buys a lot less than it did just six months ago, right? It buys a hell of a lot less than it did, or it buys less than it will in 20 years, right? So was, you got to make sure if you're going to do that, is it going to be an inflation adjusted number? The other part is that they think there's going to be a withdrawal cycle, a 4%, a Trinity rule, right? Um, I have nothing to, bad to say about that, but I can tell you from an emotional standpoint, if you think that you're going to take 4% out of your account each year, use this year as an example. What happens? Your account fell, say, 15%, 10%, whatever it is, and now you're going to take out 4%. you are going to feel really bad about that, right? So the Trinity rule and everything, I get it, right? That's there's nothing mathematically wrong about it. I can tell you it's hard in practice <laughs> to do that. So tip number one, uh, figure out that number, right? From a salary standpoint, if you don't know, say you make $80,000 a year now and you're like, I don't know, should it be 40, 30, 50? I don't know. Think about a percentage of your income. A good rule of thumb is about three quarters of your current income in retirement. So that'll be a, give you a, a good starting point just from what I see with clients here. All right, let's go on to the second thing here. You're going to think of when it comes to retire, uh, to what accounts you're putting this money in, I want you to think of something that I just call it your income to retirement ratio. Don't let that scare you here. <laughs> what I'm talking about is how much money do you make now versus how much you want to live on in retirement? A lot of you do really well. I mean, that's awesome. You do really, really well. You make $200,000 a year now, but you don't need that all in retirement. 
you maybe project that you, hey, I could live on 70, man. I get a cabin in the woods. I get my wood shop, do whatever I want. Can you tell that's my dream? Uh, so you go through that and you go, well, okay, so which part of your life is paying the most taxes? Is it when you're making 70,000? Or is it when you're making 200,000? So the second part of your plan is once you know that number, let's say you got to save, you know, $400 a month and that gets you where you want to be. All right. Should that go in an IRA, your 401k, a SEP IRA, if you're uh, eligible for that, a Roth IRA, does your company have a simple IRA? There's all these things, right? Should you just put it in a brokerage account and swing for the fences? Think of your tax rate. I think I have an example here for you. Yeah, I do. I, I just, this was real quick. I just put together a simple spreadsheet here. Let me show you this. I'm not talking numbers here, right? Because everybody makes a different amount. So the way I approached this was to say, let's pretend your tax rate during your contribution years, sorry for any misspellings here, is 22%. Let's say your tax rate in retirement is 15, right? Because the Trump tax credits expire in 2025. So I was just assuming everything reverts to the way it was. And that's how I come to 15%. Say you're making 7% a year, you put in 6,000 either into an IRA or a Roth. You do this for 20 years because maybe you're 40, 45 right now. You're going to retire when you're 60 or 65 and you're going to live a long retirement. So you got 30 years to make withdrawals in a traditional IRA, right? Or I'm going to say 401k. Really, this should say 401k here because that's probably what most of you have. The value of your account at retirement, assuming all of that, is $263,000. That means you can take 19, just $20,000 out a year right? You're going to pay tax on those withdrawals of $30,000, right? Why is that? Uh, I'm sorry, $3,000 in retirement, right? Because you're in the 15% tax bracket. So you're going to take a $3,000 tax. So your yearly actual after-tax take home is sixteen eight. All right, well, let's go back up here. You make, you're in the 22% bracket now, or you're making that kind of money, 15 in retirement, et cetera, right? you are now left with 205,000 because your after-tax contributions uh, cause you to not really be able to save as much or you're getting taxed on that, so I'm factoring in that tax. Your yearly withdrawal is 15,400. You have a 8% smaller return over the 20 years of contributions because you chose to put money in a Roth, same growth, right? So I'm not saying one grew better than the other, but because you were paying more taxes now, your net bottom balance sheet number, right? I get it. You could put six in an IRA or six in a Roth. I'm saying your after tax total money that came out of your pocket and comes back into your pocket is eight and a quarter percent difference. So right there, this, this is the best one here. My, to be honest, probably the best tip because a financial advisor like us, we, my fear is that we don't add value on a certain day and clients go, what do I need you for? So I'm always thinking, how do I add value? How can I get you that 8% or that half a percent, that extra 1%, whatever it is to justify you working for me? It's a tough industry, right? So I know that. I know it's competitive. It's what we do. So if I just shared that with you and you go, holy crap, I've never thought of it that way, that I'm going to end with 8% less all because I had in my head, the rates are going to be higher, man. I'm going to pay taxes in retirement. They're coming after me, man. You know, in reality, tax rates have gone down over generations and generations. You got to go back to the Nixon days, right? Where since then, tax rates have gone nothing but down. Where we have this fear that, oh, the government's going to have to raise taxes. Your parents thought that. I thought that, right? We all think that, but the data says, mm, your effective tax rates actually been going down over the years. It doesn't feel like that. They get you in other ways, of course, right? So number two, I want you to think of using the current income versus retirement income. Now, if you're going to make 80,000 now and you want to live on 80,000 a year, there's no difference, right? You see what I'm saying? But a lot of you make a lot of money now and you still want to put money in that Roth. Really consider taking the tax deduction now and paying taxes in retirement if that's you. If it's the other way around and you're young, of course, Roth IRA all day long, right? You're going to pay more taxes in life. So let that sucker grow. So that just a quick one there. I went on a little bit of a rant there. All right. The third thing here, and I only have three of them here for you tonight. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, so the, once you do that, you have your retirement number, you have determined where those dollars are going to go. Now you're going to invest appropriately for that account. 
everybody and their mother says S&P 500. First of all, why did you pick the S&P 500? It's one of my biggest pet peeves. People say you can't beat the S&P 500. You absolutely can. The S&P 500 is an index. Does the NASDAQ beat the S&P 500? No, not over the long run. You would think it would, but it doesn't. Does the Dow? Definitely not. There are other indices that beat the S&P 500, but I don't know why we're all focused on the S&P. Not that it's a bad investment, but really think about this here real quick. If you have a Roth IRA, this is what I'm trying to say. If you have a Roth IRA, why on earth are you investing in slow dividend type stocks? You know, they grow 3% a year, but they pay that 3% dividend and you're excited. Why on earth would you want that in a Roth IRA so far away from retirement? Remember, a Roth IRA is not taxable. So if you have to use it or you have a Roth 401k or something, do you not want that thing to grow as much as you can? The traditional IRA or the 401k, if that lags behind a little bit, you're like, okay, that's fine. As long as this sucker's growing because they can never tax you again. So we want growth stocks. We want aggressiveness. The s and is a great one. The NASDAQ, right? Look through the indices there. Small cap growth stocks. Put a a few lottery tickets in there as well. I've gone over that in previous videos where you know you don't have to invest your whole account in an index fund and then just stare at it every day. You could take a few shots on stuff. You like a little penny stock or something. It's not a lot of your dollars. It's not a great percentage of your account. Take a shot. You believe in something, go for it, right? So uh, the third thing there was be efficient with the investments in your account. This doesn't have to be rocket science. Don't make it harder than it is. Just say, I don't want a bond in my Roth, right? First of all, it's not, it's, it's not tax efficient. It's not growth efficient. And the government's saying, we're not going to tax you anyway. So get as much growth as you can out of that, right? So anyways, that's all I wanted to share with you here tonight on our Jazz After Dark. What do you think? This is kind of fun to do a little different type of uh, setup here. Can I add one more thing, by the way? Is it, uh, what if you can't save the money that you want or that the calculator says? I see this all the time. People have a goal, and it's not that it's a, a lofty goal. People have a respectable retirement goal, but all of a sudden I find out oh, their number's you know, $800 a month, and they go, I can't save that. I don't have that kind of money. What do you do? The number one thing people do is they assume Social Security will not be there, right? Social Security is not a gift from the government. It is your right. It is not paid for by some account that just sits there and now all of a sudden is short. It's a very political topic. Social Security is paid by employers, employees, and people shopping for stuff. So Social Security is not going anywhere. You may have to take less at some point. That's, I think they're already doing that for the real young kids. But you got to factor that in. So don't build a retirement plan and not include some kind of Social Security. You can lower the amount, right? You can underestimate but be sure to include that there. Also, consider your home's equity. A lot of people retire and downsize, right? Don't forget to add that in there. And that retirement calculator I was sharing with you just a second ago, that's one of the things we added. That's why I love making this stuff here in-house because we have other retirement assets. It may not be clear, but if you look at that, this could be uh, uh, an inheritance, uh, a large windfall, the sale of your property or something because you're gonna downsize. That counts. Factor that into the amount that you've already saved. Um, and one more thing. Your kids get money to go to college after you have your retirement money set up. I believe in this. You can fight me on it if you want. I understand the comments. I welcome it. If you disagree, that's okay. But you don't want to live with your kids, right? You saw their bedroom when you were growing up, where they were growing up with you. You don't want to live with your kids. You don't want that pressure on your kids because you sent them to college. Start with your retirement first and then give them money later. Help them with other things. Strategize with them on scholarships and things like that. You don't sacrifice your retirement for your kids to go to college. I believe wholeheartedly in that. So back those numbers out. If you're finding it short and you can't make enough savings for your retirement, are you giving your kids money? You putting money in a 529 or a custodial account or something better? back it out, right? Then come back to them. Right? So anyways, I know I'll probably catch a little slack for that one, but uh, just trying something different. I'm at home, by the way. I don't know. Yeah, you can't really see a whole lot there, but kind of painting and stuff. It's my little home office here, but 
Um, I just thought it'd be fun, right? A little hangout class, kind of like our wine and wealth. We do that every Thursday for clients. Uh, that is included in our service, and I hope you'll check us out. Right on our homepage there, you can see everything about us, how much it costs. We put our fees right on the site there. We're not afraid to say that. And remember, if you work with us, we're a small fish in a big pond, but we can't touch your money. You are not giving Jazz Wealth your money. This is a big deal to me. We work with Goldman Sachs. We're not entitled to use their products or anything, but we are using Goldman Sachs. Your money goes to them. We can only manage it. That's a big one. Don't give your money to some advisor out there because they say they're going to do something better for you, right? Be protective of that. I see too many horror stories out there. Anyways, I thank you for your consideration and I wish you well in getting your dough straight. Sort of a fun thing we say around here. Um, I'm going to continue drinking and maybe we'll see you tomorrow night. You know, uh, maybe there's uh, something more we can talk about. See you.